This episode is brought to you by Lexar and their amazing 1800X Gold Series Flash Memory Cards. If you would like people to pay more attention to your photos, then you need to work on making them less boring. You don't do this by finding more interesting things to photograph, but by photographing the things that are all around you in a more interesting way. Think about all the photos, you know, both your own and other people's that have stuck in your mind. That is because those images are based around a single idea. The best way to catch someone's eye and have them actually spend more time looking at your photo is to, in the first place, create a picture that leaves that person in no doubt as to what that photograph is actually about. Look at these two pictures of cows, right? One is quite clearly about the cow and the other is kind of less cow and more, well, cow and other random bits and bobs. Which one of these two communicated to you immediately what this photograph was about? So from now on, ask yourself, what is it, why is it that you are taking this photo? What is it that you want to share with the person who might see it? You can do this at the most simple level by simply isolating the subject completely, like in these Dan Winters photos. Or, at the other extreme, with a photographer like Fan Ho, who worked with light and the people of Hong Kong, you don't really need to understand photography in any really great depth to know exactly what these photos are about. What was Fan Ho interested in and wanted to share with you? The opposite of a boring photograph isn't one that just kind of goes, ah, look at me, look at me, look at me, right? But it is a photo that elicits at least some sort of reaction in the person who's looking at it. The easiest way to get hold of this and understand this idea is to use your own photos, to think about the photos that you also like looking at. When you were flicking through, you know, pages of a book or a website or walking through a gallery, what was it about one picture, one photo that arrested your attention? Why was it this photo and not the other one? To help you kind of get deeper into this and understand what it is about these things that caught your attention, think about the pictures that you like, right? And when you started being interested in photos and stuff like that, it was enough to kind of go, I, I really like this picture. It's pretty cool. You know, that's wicked. And or I like the person who's in it. And that was enough. But now revisit some of those photos. Go a little bit deeper. Pull apart the, the layers of the onion to try and figure out what has the photographer done? What have they done to photograph this particular object, this particular subject in a way that, that isn't the obvious way? This is the core thing that separates most interesting photos from those kind of average boring snapshots that are so easy to dismiss. If you never go beyond taking the obvious photo, then you are putting your images at a huge disadvantage. It is all too easy to go out, wander around with a camera, see something pretty or unusual and just photograph it, think how clever you are and then sort of move on to the next picture. The problem with this is that you are photographing that thing in the same way that many people have done before you, even if you're not aware of it. Think about all those very famous landscape environments, you know, the ones we see day in and day out, and they've been photographed by hundreds, if not thousands of photographers a year. Now, how long does it take you to look at these photos of the same subject, photographed in the same way, before you can be completely bored with them? So if you want people to notice your photographs, to spend a little bit more time on them, instead of just flicking straight past them, you need to go beyond the obvious. You need to explore the subject, take some time to, you know, photograph it from, from different angles. Even just doing that, you've gone beyond the run of the mill picture. I photograph in what most people would consider to be very boring places. You know, this is the shopping center in Brno, I think, if I seem to recall. And it's, this is a stairwell. The other one is a gate at an airport when I was waiting to, you know, in Dublin, going on a flight. Two very dull places. And then there's this photograph of a giant star-spangled banner at Fort McHenry in Baltimore. 
Now, how many tourists go there every day, do you think, and take a picture just of this big flag, right? Okay. And, and that's the obvious thing. So in this picture, and I'm not saying that it's an amazing photo because it's, it's, you know, it's pretty average, right? But at least it's showing something different. There's a bit of a sense of scale. There's a bit of a depth to it. There's a bit of context and placement. We can see, you know, the, the skyscrapers of Baltimore in the background. And that's all little bits that are starting to separate that photo from the boring, obvious picture. When you combine this with the idea that you learned earlier, you know, about having a single purpose in your photo, it makes your image so much stronger and it's already starting to stand out from the crowd. Earlier, we looked at the idea of the idea of having a purpose in your photo. And that's the thing that's going to help catch people's attention. What's going to keep their attention is composition of having a strong image that then in, you know, invites the viewer to spend time, you know, exploring it, have their eyes wander around. Now, throughout this whole video, you will have seen examples of strong images that have strong composition. And, you know, people talk a lot about rules of composition, of all these kind of things. And there aren't as far as I'm concerned, specifically rules. There are more kind of suggestions. You know, much like when we talked about being inspired by other people's photographs as suggestions, it's helpful to look at examples of a photographer who uses composition very, very well. And I did a whole video um, about Steve McCurry and his, his awesome composition stuff, which is a wonderful introduction to using composition in your own photographs. And I'll link to it for you at the end of the video. But know this, the way that you can make somebody spend some more time is to throw them a curveball. You know, you don't have to always do the obvious thing in a composition. You know, change it up a bit. Have people half cut off and stuff. Just go a little bit off piste and see what happens. Just feel free to explore. As soon as you start exploring and playing with composition, and not worrying about the rules, then you are going to help make your photographs inherently more interesting. To give you some inspiration, to help you get past those obvious shots, it is extremely beneficial for you to have influences that go beyond the quite possibly very narrow circles that you might find yourself in. If you are in a photography club or a group online where everybody kind of does the same sort of photos, then you'll find that you've all been referencing the same photographers and the same works that you like, you know, so it's almost this kind of very muddy thing. So how original can you be if you're in that situation? And that's why you really need to get a, a bigger pool of inspiration that you can draw from. That photograph of the stairwell that we saw earlier, now that idea comes from something that I saw in an Ezra Stoller photograph, right? I'm not copying it per se, but I looked in that image, the Ezra Stoller one, and, and it implanted somewhere. So when I was confronted with something that felt similar, I could take that idea as a springboard because it was there somewhere. I remembered, oh, I did this sort of thing and, and run with it. So some of the photographers that I draw inspiration from come from such wide ranges of genres. And it just goes to show you don't need to limit yourself specifically to the types of photos that you want to take. As you start to find inspiration, to seek out different ways of approaching your photos, of using your camera in different ways, you're going to come across an idea that is possibly one of the worst things that you can do when you are trying to make your photos more interesting. So we're going to pay a couple of bills very quickly and a big thank you to Lexar and the new Professional 1800X SDXC UHS-2 gold card series. Next week, I'm going on holiday and I will be taking my cameras with me loaded up with the Lexar 1800X gold series cards. In this case, I've decided to go with the 256 gig card, but they also come in 64 gig, 128 and a whopping 512 gig capacity. If I want to indulge in a little bit of sports photography or some wildlife action, or if I'm feeling extra saucy, maybe shooting in some 4K video for you guys, then I can do that without worrying about buffers because the cards themselves have a write speed of up to 180 meg a second. 
the cards are also designed for durability and I have been known to drop things, to fall in puddles of water and in this case, which is more likely, subject my photos to multiple passes of x-rays. And the Lexar cards are stress tested against all this stuff. So I know that whatever I put into my photos, onto that card will still be waiting for me when I get home. Thank you once again for Lexar for sponsoring this video and for supporting the channel. We live in a world where we have access to amazing tools, awesome tools that can help us express our creativity in the digital environment. The problem is that none of these presets, none of these actions are going to create an interesting photograph from basically rubbish. You might be familiar with that expression, you know, putting a lipstick on a pig. And, and well, you know, that's what happens when you try, when you try and put stuff onto an inherently boring photograph in an effort to, to spice it up. If that photo doesn't have any clear purpose or you haven't done anything interesting with it originally or you haven't, you haven't gone beyond the obvious, it's not going to be sorted out by you know, just chucking on a load of, of digital effects. What does happen though when you do this is you end up making your photo look like everybody else's. And, and why would you do that? Why would you actually actively make your photo look like everyone else's? By all means, use digital effects. By all means, work the magic in the digital darkroom. But don't think that that by itself is going to make your photo look awesome. It isn't true that there is good light and there is bad light. There is just the way that you choose to use that light. However, what is true that there is light which is more forgiving, more interesting and a hell of a lot easier to shoot in. The golden hour is one such example, you know, that time of day when the sun's down low and it's all warm and beautiful and it's just looking awesome. It's, you know, it's hard to take a bad photograph then. But when you combine that feeling of the golden hour with that single purpose, with a composition that invites people to look into the photo, then you are so far ahead of the pack. Now remember, you don't have to jump up and down, you don't have to shout, you just need to create some sort of interest in the viewer and that's when they will stop being boring. That's when your photos, rather than the viewer, will stop being boring. We can make boring viewers if we want, <laughs> that sort of thing. But this is the whole point, is that you are looking for tools that you have at your disposal and light is one of them to just elevate your pictures in some sort of way. If you learn to spend time trying to photograph in different types of light, then you can always find an interesting photo and stop blaming other things outside of that for the reason why your images are boring. It's entirely possible that your photographs have become boring, at least you think that they've become boring, because that the image that you have in your head is not translating into the photo that you see, and you just need to reset something. So when you put the ideas that have been in this video into practice, that you go back to the basics. You think about why, why am I taking this photograph? What is the message that I want to send? Not a deeper message, but I want to say, look at this as an interesting thing, but I want to show you that interesting thing in an interesting way. When you put all the other things into practice, then you are getting a step closer to aligning the ideas that you have up here with the image that ends up with. And it does take a little bit of time, so don't be discouraged, right? Even little changes will start to help you feel like you're getting away from those boring, everyday, obvious photos. And just please bear in mind, remember that you don't need to be creating masterpieces. They don't need to be viral sensations. These photos, they just want to stand out a little bit from the crowd, catch somebody's eye. And when you start doing this consistently, you are going to consign all those boring images to the dustbin. Having those ideas of composition to play with and put into your photographs is, is as I mentioned, a great way to have them stand out. This is the video that I talked about that features the wonderful work of Steve McCurry and will give you such inspiration on how to create and use awesome composition. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.